Lean Rosario, baseball hitting tips, small hitters way to power. Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. Hey, I want you to imagine for a moment that you're in the fight of your life. Your opponent, a 9 foot 9 inch male wearing a scale of armor that weighs 125 pounds and that the spear point on top of his spear weighed 15 pounds alone. How would you beat him? Well, shepherd boy David from the Bible beat Goliath using a slingshot. He was an expert marksman and all it took was one stone to bring mighty Goliath down. New York Times best-selling author, three times best-selling author Tim Ferriss talks about that being effective is doing the right things and being efficient is doing those things right. Now David was effective because he used a slingshot where he was outmatched physically and he was efficient in using that slingshot. It only took one stone to bring mighty Goliath down. Well, in a moment, we're going to talk about a small slugger, Willene Rosario, the Colorado Rockies, and we're going to talk about two baseball batting tips that small hitters can use to compete with the big ones. Are you a small hitter? Willene Baby Bull Rosario is a small hitter compared to behemoths like Albert Pujols, Giancarlo Stanton, and Miguel Cabrera. Rosario stands 5 foot 11 inches and weighs in at 225 pounds according to Fangraphs.com. Sure, 220 pounds isn't small by any stretch, but 5 foot 11 inches sure is, especially by today's standards, hence the nickname Baby Bull. Just for fun, let's compare Willene Rosario or David to Miguel Cabrera, Goliath. Key metrics are according to ESPN's HitTracker.com. As you can see here, this is a little spreadsheet that shows, this is from 2012, but the average true distance in feet of the homers that both these guys hit. You can see Willene Rosario, he's got a little less home runs, but 412.9 feet versus Miguel Cabrera's 407.6, and then the average ball exit speed per home run for Willene Rosario was 104.9, and Miguel Cabrera's was 105. Now, there are a couple points to talk about. Willene Rosario in 2012 had 426 plate appearances to Miguel Cabrera's 697. So obviously, Rosario has some smaller data points. And also, Miggy 16 extra dingers may have brought down his average true distance and average ball exit speed. But still, even with the mismatch of plate appearances data and accounting for Miggy's extra homers, on paper, Willene Rosario shouldn't even be in the same room with Miguel Cabrera. So what is Willene Rosario doing to compete with the Goliaths of baseball? He's using science. Baseball batting tips number one, stop standing still. One thing Willene Rosario does really well is he unweights the bat. There are two ways he does this. The first we're going to talk about is forward momentum. Draw a line here on his front hip. What you're going to see is he does a little toe tap but you're going to see him get a negative move or a float was what I call and then you're going to see him move forward as you can see he moves forward pretty good with that 220 pound baby bull body and the other thing he does is he has a slight barrel tilt towards the pitcher just before he falls forward and what that looks like is you're going to see his bat more horizontal or parallel to the ground and you're going to see him tilt it forward tilt it towards the pitcher get it moving and then from there, he can throw it sideways into the zone to intercept the pitch plane just before the ball hits the catcher's glove. Click the video link to see the results of a Zep swing experiment I did testing a longer stride against a wide no stride approach. Baseball batting tips number two, big power in using the skeleton. This is another swing of Willene Rosario's and spinal engine mechanics are key. Here's how Willene Rosario uses his skeleton by showing his numbers. Check out his numbers on the back. You can see the two, but the, the zero comes into play right here. So you're seeing him show the pitcher his numbers. The other thing he's doing is he's going to hide his hands from the pitcher. You can see the hands are just about where the umpire's head, head was. You're going to see those hands disappear as the ball's coming. You can also see the barrel tilt towards the pitcher in this one. And the other thing, the last thing that he does in using the skeleton properly is he's going to get a slight downward angle with his shoulders here. You can see his back elbow back here peeking out. You can see this kind of downward angle coming towards the ball here. 
and that is how he uses his skeleton to be very effective and efficient to the ball. Now click the video link to see the results of another ZEP swing experiment I did testing showing the numbers versus not showing the numbers. So how does a small slugger compete with a big one? Being effective is strictly following human movement rules that are proven by science and being efficient within those movements. Just like David was effective by using a slingshot against a foe that he was totally outmatched physically and being efficient with that slingshot it only took one blow to bring the mighty Goliath down. So make sure that we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go, the Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly. And it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.